How are y'all? I am a human rights educator and an activist. And I want to keep my comments to a journey, a personal journey and a national journey, and hopefully a global journey. Because the America I was born into, and I was born in 1950, was clearly different than the America we are in today. When I came of age as a university student in the late 60s, my generation and many other people, millions of other people, went into the streets to confront numerous societal wrongs, wrongs of an unjust war abroad, war in the streets when we tore into each other, civil rights, women's rights, Native American rights, gay rights, elderly rights, rights for the disabled. And it's easy today to feel as if that journey, that struggle is over and that those causes have somehow been won. But the America we live in today, in many ways, is vastly different than when I was a first year student. When I was a student, you couldn't experience the world in real time. You couldn't sit in the comfort of your home with a laptop and watch people struggling simultaneously as we were elsewhere in the world. But of course, today, you can because technologically the world has been reduced to the size of a marble. It's phenomenal. The Embry Human Rights Program here offers trips to anyone, not just our students, to various locations in this world four times a year. So I want to spend just a few moments to show you some images of places that we have been in recent years. And I need to caution you that some of these images are disturbing and graphic. Because after all, if you're talking about human rights, you are really, in general, talking about bad human behavior. This is what we are trying to struggle against and to overcome. This is on the wall at a death camp in Poland that most everyone and probably most of you have never heard of, a site called Belzec, where over 600,000 people were murdered in nine months. And here you see an SMU student contemplating, looking at the graves. The slope that you see is the memorial and the graves of 600,000 people are underneath. How do 600,000 people be murdered and most of the world, including technologically advanced societies, have no clue as to who they were or a place called Belzec? Sobibor, an hour and a half away from Belzec, more than a quarter of a million people, mostly Jews, murdered from all over Europe. There's nothing there today except these three memorials. And that is the mausoleum under which the ashes of a quarter of a million people are sealed. Majdanek. It looks as if the Germans left this camp yesterday. Everything is there. 360,000 people were murdered at Majdanek, and here are their ashes. If you could ask the rhetorical question, what can 360,000 people physically be reduced to? There they are. Birkenau. Everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with Auschwitz-Birkenau as the symbol of the Holocaust. Destroyed gas chambers that the Germans blew up. A million and a half people murdered at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Those are candles left by SMU students and community members. Gross Rosen, with the notorious phrase, Arbeit macht frei, work will set you free. Of course, it never did. And the quarry that many were worked to death and pushed to their death in. This is a sculpture at a German camp in, outside of Hamburg, but to me it epitomizes what this struggle is all about. 56,000 people perished at Neuengamme. Mauthausen in Austria. 
these need no explanation, I'm sure. A skeletal memorial to allied airmen who were tortured and killed at Mauthausen. 82 children taken from an area north of Prague, an entire village wiped off the face of the earth. These 82 children, it's one of the largest sculptors in the world of children, were sent to Poland and gassed in Poland. Doesn't look like much. It's a burial pit in Lithuania. 5,000 victims herded into that hole and killed. 40,000 people buried in a forest where they were murdered in Latvia. These are symbols in Austria at the 70th anniversary of the German takeover of Austria. Peace. An A-bomb survivor in Hiroshima. She was 16 at the time her family perished and she was burned over 80% of her body pointing out where she was. A man who was 15, a firebomb survivor of the bombing of Tokyo. Rwanda, a million people dead in three months of April, May, and June 1994. Age meant nothing. These are grim photos and a dismal reminder. This man shot in and through the head, survived, and walked 40 miles to Burundi to be saved after having been shot through the head. A woman with the photograph of her husband and father, she's one of only six survivors in an area where over 30,000 people were killed. The Congo, crimes going on left and right women who are the primary targets of all conflict everywhere in the world, and the children who pay the severe price of growing up without a family. And some of these children grow up to become part of the problem. Darfur, the destruction of village and the crime against women. Refugee camps. You and I will put our heads on our pillow tonight. These folks only wish they had something similar like that. Torture. If torture were a disease, the world would be in an epidemic. Two-thirds of the countries in the world routinely torture people. It's not easy to talk about or confront. The abuse of a Zimbabwean journalist. Hangings on almost a daily basis in Iran. And of course, the United States is with the same issue of the death penalty. A gas chamber, the big yellow mama electric chair in Alabama, and even the gallows of Delaware. Over 800 women disappeared and dead in Juarez right across the border. How can this happen, and how can it happen just a few hundred miles from here? The kickback and expulsion of Roma Gypsies, if you will, Sinti and Roma people from Western Europe, Northern Ireland, Britain, France, Italy. The murder of Danny Cato, the chief newspaper in Uganda, published his name and his photo as a gay rights activist, urging people to kill gay and lesbian people. Somebody broke into his house and killed him. The face of hate. Anti-Semitism, we've all heard the phrase never again from the Holocaust. It was supposed to have meant something. But of course, the destruction and racism, anti-Semitism in this world is everywhere. This is on a memorial at the Schindler, factor, a Schindler campsite, Jews out in Poland in German. Jews out with the SS lightning bolts and the swastika. This was two years ago. Last year, it had been spray painted over, but you can still see it. Swastikas on the Embassy of Colombia in Buenos Aires two years ago. Women protesting for the disappeared in Mexico. 
Congo women protesting for help. Mothers of the disappeared marching every week, demanding from their government to where are their daughters and sons from the dirty wars of Argentina in the 70s and 80s. And it's inconceivable that the only way they can remember their loved ones is to wear a photo around their neck and the date that they disappeared. The modern green movement in Iran and the face of young protesters wanting a better Iran. Protesters in Japan wanting nuclear peace. Rwandan journalists, so their, their cohorts cannot be jailed for protesting against the current government. And who we are. These trips are open to everybody. Your challenge, our collective challenge, is to work for a world, because I know everybody in here shares the same feeling, to have a world without these terrible things in it. We all want a world where we don't have to have hate crimes, crimes against women, rape and war, violence, and the like. We are trying to work and educate our students and the global society that we live in to eliminate the most dangerous words that come in any language, and those are the words I didn't know. We have to get past that phrase. It's easy when you look at photos like this to feel overwhelmed because of such terrible bad behavior and when you can throw up your hands and go, gosh, it's so much, what can I do? How can I possibly stem that tide of bad behavior? We live in the eighth largest city in the United States and there is no shortage of people here who need your help and no shortage of opportunity to make a difference for the human good. Whatever your passion is, women's rights, children's rights, refugee rights, issues of homelessness, AIDS, LGBT issues, there are NGOs, there are people and organizations here in Dallas that demand, they're pleading for you to help to move Dallas to a better place, to move this country to a better place. That is what we are all seeking, to have a world without hate, without terror, without violence, and most of all, without victims. Many of you who are young people will, in the years and decades to come, be parents yourself. And so the rhetorical question for you is, what kind of world do you want? And what are your commitments to help bring this world about? It is no longer sufficient to sit on the sidelines. Life is not a spectator sport. We have to get involved. The only failure in human rights, the only failure, is the failure to do nothing. There are people in this society, in this country, and around the world who need you. To do something is to win in the struggle of human rights. The essential truth of human rights is what this struggle is all about, and that is there is no such thing as a lesser person. God bless you and peace.